Father, as we explore your word, may you open our hearts and our minds to hear from you now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So hopefully by now you've realized that Christingle is all about Jesus being light of the world. I actually think it's one of the most special moments when we all stand around in a circle with the candles lit, thinking about Jesus coming into the world at Christmas time. When we do it all together, it brings more light. If we just had that one candle on our own, it would be a little light. But when we were all together, there was a bigger light. In these times, friends, that we live in at the moment, it seems that darkness is all around. We hear of wars. We hear of weather causing problems. We hear of crimes being committed. All around us, it looks like there is darkness, even from within the church. It might feel to you that God is not around at the moment. And I think that, is a, that might well be how you feel. I've felt that sometimes. You might feel also that there is no hope. Yet, even if that is how you feel, that you feel God is not there, that you feel there is no hope, that's not actually accurate. Because sometimes we have to look closely to find the hope, even if it is small. Think about that phone call you had this week, which didn't quite go as planned. Perhaps you ended up slamming the phone down and swearing. Go back to that conversation. Where was the hope? Because there will have been a small piece of hope within that conversation. Perhaps you've had a difficult week with those you live with. Perhaps you've had to tell children off. Children, perhaps you've been told off. In that moment, though, there is still a little bit of hope. Where is the hope that you have seen this week? Because in Isaiah 60, which was the first reading, the people of God were in exile. They weren't in their homeland. They were far away. They had been conquered. They were being oppressed by the world's biggest superpower of the time. The presence of God among them, which was symbolized for them in the temple in Jerusalem, was destroyed. They were far from home, and there was no hope. Yet, Isaiah, who wrote those words that were read to us this morning, tells them to get up because their light had come. No matter how hopeless it all seemed, the light would break through. Fast forward a few hundred years later to the second reading, and this comes after apparent centuries of apparent silence from God. The people of God were still ruled by an oppressive superpower at the time. This time it was the Romans. And all once again seemed hopeless. John tells them about the word, the logos in the Greek. The Greek-speaking Jews understood that there was power that came from the Father over all creation that mediated between humanity and God, the Logos. We lose some of the, some of the impact when we translate it to word. We go back to the Greek. It's one thing they said to do at theological college. You never mention Greek in your sermon. But I think we need to mention that word Logos because it has so much more meaning than word. Because John tells them that this Logos is a person. It is Jesus. That he is God. And his light will defeat the darkness. Two different parts of scripture we had this morning. One from the Old Testament and one from the New. Two different parts of scripture written centuries apart. Yet in both we see that all is not lost. The light defeats the darkness. Let me ask you, friends, where in your life is it dark at the moment? Where in your life can you not see the hope that you need? Where in your life do you need some illumination so that you can be assured of the way ahead? 
in those areas, in those areas, this morning, I want to encourage you to look for the light of Jesus in any circumstance that you face. Maybe you've got a medical appointment coming up this week that you're dreading. Maybe you've got to make a phone call to somebody and tell them, actually, I'm sorry, we're not going to make it for Christmas. Maybe you've got to ring, you know, you're going to see somebody in the street and you're going to cross on the other side of the road to avoid them. Look for the light of Jesus in the circumstances that you face. Remember the Christingle that we lit that symbolizes light in the darkness. Because if we think of darkness, when was the last time that you were in complete darkness? I imagine it's quite some time ago. When I go to sleep at night, it's not totally dark because I see the street light from outside. My alarm clock has the time on. The standby box on the the standby light on the Virgin box has a green has a red light. It's not totally dark. There is a lot of talk about light pollution and that we don't get to see the real darkness anymore. That, I think, in many ways is a good thing because it shows us just how difficult it is to be in complete darkness. So if you feel to be in complete darkness in the circumstances in your life, there is a hope, there is a light, and his name is Jesus. Even the faintest glimmer can give you hope and a way forward. The light of Jesus shines brightly and the darkness cannot overcome it. We are fast approaching Christmas. If you're like me, you haven't yet started your Christmas shopping. I've missed the last posting date to Australia for my brother's Christmas card. Thank goodness for Moonpig Australia, by the way. But as Christmas comes sharply into view... Let's not look at our houses and see who has the most decorations up. Or, well, they've got a bigger tree than us. That's not fair. Or, well, they have some nicer lights outside. That's not fair. Let's look beyond what we can see. And let's actually look backwards. Why backwards? Because if we truly want to celebrate Christmas, we have to look back just over 2,000 years to a cold, drafty stable in Bethlehem. A baby boy born to a teenage mum who wasn't yet married. Joseph, who was to be Mary's wife, was not the father. But that didn't matter because the baby boy was the most precious gift that could have been given to anyone. He was Emmanuel, which means God with us. In Isaiah, the people were despondent because the temple had been destroyed and they were far from home. But the baby boy who arrives in Bethlehem is the light in the darkness that cannot be extinguished. Throughout his ministry on earth, Jesus would tell the world lots of things about the Father in heaven. He would promise to send us the Holy Spirit which lives in each of us. Jesus, the baby boy, was more than just that. He was fully human but fully divine. He would go on to change the course of human history by dying on a cross to take our sins away and allow us access to the Father. You see, Christmas without Easter doesn't make sense. And Easter without Christmas doesn't make sense. They go hand in hand. Because when Jesus went to the cross and beat death, he was the light that could not be put out, even death when he rose again on what we now celebrate as Easter morning. We have lights on our tree to remind us of the light of Christmas. We have candles on our Christingle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. So next time, friends, it feels really dark, take a moment to think of the stable in Bethlehem where Jesus would be laid. It's one of the most remarkable things to ever happen. The Son of God, born of Mary, comes to walk the earth that he created. His light can never be extinguished. So I encourage you, celebrate Jesus Christ this Christmas. 
Don't celebrate the latest trendy present, the best cooked turkey, or even the crispiest roast potato. Because Christmas is all about Christ. Because if we take Christ out of Christmas, we're not just left with any letters. We're left with M&S. Amen.